Former atheists have read it. What made you turn to religion? Not me. A friend of my parents. He suffered a minor heart attack during a business trip, and the moment he arrived at the hospital, he got a massive heart attack. He was clinically dead for about 2 minutes before he was brought back. He hasn't told anyone what he saw, and whenever someone asks, he just says I really don't want to talk about it. But from that day on, not a Sunday goes by that he doesn't show up for mass. I hope he's doing alright. One of my uncles had a massive heart attack and was clinically dead for a bit as well. Something about what he experienced in dying and being brought back prompted him to look at how my aunt a lifelong devout Catholic finds faith so important. And he went from being an atheist apathist to getting confirmed himself. He's really doing well, physically and as a whole person. And though I'm no longer Catholic, or an atheist, I am genuinely happy for him. This is interesting to read on a Friday night. Not just any Friday night. A good Friday night. You don't know desperation until you start praying as an atheist. Yeah the darkest day of my life was when I was at a work conference for my new job and I got a few messages and calls that my best friend died. I was in such a bad state, hysterically crying. Just a complete heap of despair. I pulled out a bible to help and I just wanted someone, anyone there. Pure desperation. I lost a close friend last month. It f and sucks. I don't think I'm dealing with it well. But who does? I'm sorry for your loss and I hope you're hanging in there. I read this as athletes rather than atheists and spent embarrassingly long trying to find the connection between athletes and religion. Ah. Athletes. The arch nemesis to religion. If only the crusades were like the Olympics. I read an entire paper once about how athletes don't believe in God and was laughing so hard about how ridiculous it was until I realized it actually said atheists and then I remembered I'm dyslexic. I was raised atheist and became a Christian at 19. I met a group of people through friends who seemed genuinely to care about others. They volunteered with elderly and fed the homeless, but also the kind of people who would sit quietly with you while you're going through a tough time, or drop off food to someone grieving, or buy a used van for a struggling single dad. I could write an essay on all the ways they helped me and other people for nothing in return except friendship they didn't even collect tithes at their church. Encouraging people to donate their tithe to bigger initiatives that could help more people. I was so impacted by the way they lived in service to others that I began exploring Christianity. The thought of being part of a group that tries to make others lives better seemed way more meaningful than how I had been living. I learned about Christianity God in an environment that encouraged hard questions, debate, studying for yourself and showing care for everyone. It disturbs me deeply that many people use Christianity as an excuse for doing terrible things. I feel like this is how Jesus would want Christianity to be. It's also why I have such a hard time finding a church to call home. It's rare. Insultingly rare. Interestingly enough, my humanist atheist friends pulled me out of a religious conservative upbringing because they behaved in the manner you're describing. Whereas I saw a lot of judgment from my Christian peers. I really wish I could become religious. Must be really nice to have a faith. Yeah, I'll never forget riding to the graveside with my grandfather after my grandmother died. He was an atheist and just as we were about to get out of the car he said, I really envy people with faith. They think this isn't the end. Would be nice seeing all your loved ones again. Really can't judge people for wanting to believe in that. The only thing that bugs me about being an agnostic atheist is that there isn't divine justice. Sometimes it would be nice to believe that the worst people won't get away with committing atrocities. On the other hand, this creates a desire to create more accountability, rather than letting bad people get away with sh because God will judge them. If you start committing serious crimes, you best believe I want justice to be served, because 99.99999% it won't occur in an afterlife. Regardless of one's beliefs, this bad days make me wanna believe in something. I've always thought so too. It looks like it would be very comforting. My great uncle was a lifelong atheist till his wife of 50 years died. She was always begging him to go to church and he would never go with her. When she died he was so devastated he started going to church to feel closer to her. That naturally resulted in him converting. He loved and missed her so much that he was willing to believe anything that would reunite them. He was a tough man but her death broke him. He always gave me sh for not going to church and it annoyed me but I respected how deeply he loved my aunt. 
On occasion I would go with him and he was grateful I humored him. My father did this exact same thing after my mom passed. For the first 31 years of my life, the man never went to church. My mom, on the other hand, went every week and was a very active volunteer for them helping with all of their community events and fundraisers. After she passed, my dad started going every week. As an atheist, I absolutely love the community that church temple synagogue mosque offer. Human beings need to be around each other and need social connection. Religious institutions offer community and support and a sense of belonging. I 100% understand why seniors especially turn to religion in their later years. Love is crazy. Dude, I wish I could experience true love. I bet it's better than heroin. It is better than heroin. My life hit rock bottom. I was constantly anxious, constantly searching for peace. I took up meditation and found myself praying. Eventually a co-worker invited me to their weekly church dinner and over many months I found myself a regular member. For those thinking I joined the Westboro Baptist Church or something, I am a member of an independent church that broke off from the Methodist Church specifically over the conservative policies they instituted. As an agnostic, this is one thing I can appreciate about religions and that is the sense of community. I was raised in a church and loved attending, because I enjoyed the feeling of community, even though I can't claim I was ever a true believer. For a lot of people, that sense of community and belonging can be much more meaningful and impactful to their lives than any of the actual religious teachings. Either way, I'm glad it's helped improve your life. I become the most religious person every test result day. I'm a college professor in the Bible Belt. I'm probably involved in a lot of prayers. My dad is a biology professor in Missouri. Evolution is always a fun time for him. There are no atheists during finals. I am a extremist last Thursdayist, so I pray to myself. Take that. I was on a years long depression and hopelessness spiral in my late 20s that I couldn't seem to dig myself out of. Decided I had nothing to lose by sincerely praying to God, and Jesus by extension. So I did. Within days I had a renewed internal strength and motivation that coupled with some random things falling into place, helped me dig out of it and start moving to a much better place. Now, I don't give a sh that I'm generally very logical and a big believer in the scientific method. God had my back when I needed him even though I probably didn't deserve it. So I will always have his. I just take the stance that our understanding of him is still pretty primitive and science is a tool for understanding his works, not something at odds with it. As a Christian I am often confused by those who live in the mindset of God will provide so they don't take advice help guidance from earthly professionals. The reason I am confused is that awfully believe that these are FOD's provisions for you. For example, I recently lost a friend to type 2 diabetes complications. He had been treating this illness under a doctor's care for many years but had recently decided to put it in God's hands and to take a holistic approach. To me, God put those doctors on earth. God gave them the brains, willpower, work ethic etc to become a doctor so that they could be there for you in your time of need. To me, the doctors are God providing does that make sense? So, to make a long story short if I believe in God and his omniscience then how can I not believe in science? To be honest. Because I separated the how and the why, I accept science explaining the house, evolution, big bang, etc, but they never explained the whys for me, and, as an objective tool, science was never intended to explain it regardless, religion and science answer different questions, and both are incredibly fulfilling to me. We struggled with infertility for a couple years, I was at my breaking point, I had tried every supplement, wives tell even fertility crystals, we were of course consulting with doctors and taking meds, trying to find it in our budget to pay for the expensive fertility treatments, I decided I had nothing left to lose and I prayed, I told my husband the next day how dumb I felt for it, and he told me he had also been praying for pregnancy over the past few days, we went in for a fertility treatment and missed my ovulation by one day, we were crushed, until a few weeks later when I got a positive pregnancy test, Turns out we had conceived naturally that month, and saved the money on the expensive treatment, to really seal my non-believer coffin. We learned we were pregnant with twins but in the process of miscarrying one. I prayed every single day for that baby to survive and I am currently in the hospital getting ready to deliver to healthy baby girls. Wow that's amazing. 
congratulations. I wanted to pray for people to start using the serious tag. I don't like serious tags, they make it hard to sin properly, f you sure see. My sister became born again later in life. I had always believed in God but didn't really have a relationship with him. She became so pushy and changed so much it turned me off to the whole idea of Christianity. She had a son who I was very close with and for a few years after he turned 13 lived with my family. Unfortunately at 17 he got into drugs and ran away. Four months we didn't hear from him then one day he popped up at my sister's house. Pretty much completely worn down. He looked and smelled terrible. On my way out to my sister's I was at such a loss on what to do that I prayed out loud to God to help guide me. I decided to find a worship station and there was a sermon playing that felt like it was directed right at me. Everything that preacher said felt like he was talking to me. A commercial came on and as an impatient person I looked at the station number and decided to go back in a few minutes I went back and that station was nothing but static. No music. No sermon it just didn't exist. I tried going up and down thinking I mixed up a number but still nothing. I now have a much close relationship with God. Not a full fledged every Sunday at church relationship but a good one. When I am stressed, I go to the vending machine and get a Milky Way candy bar. Around the time this happened, I had been on a reading binge with philosophy and religion books for a while so the subject was fresh on my mind. I had been thinking a lot about things like deism, transcendentalism, and naturalistic pantheism. On a particularly stressful day, I went to go get my Milky Way. The machine was out of them and I was crestfallen. I got a Snickers instead, which is not quite as good. I walked back to my desk thinking, the universe has no inherent order or meaning. There is nothing watching out for us or a great plan. Camus was right. I sat down and opened it and took a bite. And it was a Milky Way, in a Snickers wrapper. This sounds like the type of thing that would give me a religious awakening. One time I got onion rings inside my french fries. I now believe in the circle of endless suffering. Haven't you heard the story of Jesus turning a Snickers bar into Milky Way? I really hope this is true, even if it's not. Thanks for sharing this story. It made my day a little bit brighter. I'm sorry, but I can confirm that this is false. Snickers is better than Milky Way. I'm starting to realize that it might be actually incredibly good for humans to believe that everything will be okay. Like, in general, having a purpose and believing that there is a point produces positive brain chemicals. I'm getting into a specific religion now, including aspects that I don't necessarily believe are true. Take prayer for example it doesn't matter if there's a beardy dude in the clouds taking notes. It's not the point regularly contemplating community and loved ones is a good thing to do. If you need to frame it as talking to a fella in the sky, well then do it to it. To me, faith is more about believing that living a certain way is the best way to live. Whether it's true or not is besides the point. That being said, religion is not an excuse to treat others poorly. If someone uses their religion to treat other people poorly, I still look at them the way I look at anyone that treats people poorly. Relating to your last paragraph recently heard an interpretation of don't take my name in vain not meaning, don't say oh my god, but instead, don't use my name to justify your hatred bigotry violence, really like that take. I went to a catholic high school and my religion teacher said the same thing, to use the lord's name in vain is to pass judgment on god's behalf. Not just saying Jesus out of context. That's all that has stuck with me from those classes as so many people don't think of it that way but it makes the most sense. This is the Jewish interpretation of don't carry my name in vain. The original very is carry rather than take which can have different interpretations. Yeah, that's one of the most misunderstood verses in O. Westboro Baptist Church is the textbook definition of taking the Lord's name in vain. Religion definitely fulfills psychological needs. It assuages fear of the unknown inevitable, death, guilt about one's transgressions, and a set of instructions to live the right life. Without those, you have to fill in all the blanks on your own. And that requires a heavy amount of mental collateral that so many people are willing or able to reserve. A heavy amount of mental collateral. Man if this isn't the truth. I accepted all the things you mentioned from a logical standpoint and I went through probably 5 good years where nothing really mattered. What's the point in trying if it all just ends one day? 
But then I realized it's not about accomplishments or keeping up with the Jones. It's about feeling satisfied at the end of every day and that means being satisfied with failure as long as I tried my best and inevitably learned something. Most of us will be average at best and that's okay. Of course it's okay to aspire for more but I think I was expecting it based on what I thought made people successful which turned out to be a giant lie lol. Now this is a good take. There are religions in every culture. Scientists believe that humans are predisposed to believing in a religion. That it helped community cohesion and helped people to cooperate and survive. I visited our atheism and I went into cringe induced religious revival. Yeah, even as an atheist that place is just too negative and ridiculing of anything even tangential to religious belief. I was raised Christian, became an atheist in college and was atheist for more than a decade, but became a Christian again about 3 months ago. I fought a war against everything I hated most about myself and lost, when I had lost all hope of ever being able to overcome depression and addiction. I tried praying and, to my great surprise, I received an answer. In that moment I surrendered my life to God. I will never be able to explain my experience. I don't have scientifically conclusive evidence, but I will never doubt that God is real after what I experienced. I have overcome my addiction and depression and, while I still have long way to go, I'm doing much better than I ever dreamed possible. Reddit is so negative against Christians lol. Good to hear that your life is better. My family has never participated in any religious institutions. I am 28 and an atheist, or at least I thought I was until about 4 years ago when my views began to change. I can remember the exact moment I began to question my atheism. My parents divorced, and subsequently my father spiraled into depression and my family tore itself apart. Witnessing my father attempt at taking his own life and many other traumatic experiences and self-revelations forced me to look within myself far more than I had ever done. My atheist mentality offered me no relief or methodology to deal with the suffering that life had dealt me. It made me bitter, angry and violent at times and I dealt with the emotional stress through the same methods I had learned from my father, substance abuse, until I stumbled upon stories of a biblical nature and origin that offered me alternative ways to deal with the situation I was in. Could secular stories had the same effect, maybe for others. But I found biblical stories spoke to me on a far deeper and meaningful manner. That alone grew my respect that was previously non-existent for religious teachings and institutions. With all of the flaws that religions hold, I began to see the value within them that is often overlooked. Fast forward to now. I am engaged to a Greek woman, who is of orthodox faith. I will be baptized to be married and I am so excited about it all and my relationship with my family is as good as it has ever been with improvements still to be had of course. To those who may be wondering, do I believe in God? It's complicated, but essentially yes, as a metaphysical thing, as a real tangible personal thing, not so much, but I certainly will strive to live my life as though as God is as real as the keyboard I am typing on, simply because I think there is no harm in that. The harm usually arises when people think they know what God wants and decide it's their job to force those beliefs and values on others. So. There can be harm, but that's an outgrowth of pride really, as long as religion is a personal exercise in growth, it can certainly benefit the individual. Best wishes. Maybe not exactly what you're looking for, but I've converted from atheism to agnosticism, not because I now am more open to believing in the existence in a divine power, more so because I find assertion in anything that unknowable to be kind of arrogant, I respect people's beliefs a lot. But when it comes to assertion that any one religion, or atheism, is undeniably true is the line that becomes too far for me. Much in the same way that human knowledge of the why behind the world's creation is much too limited for most people to assert that there is one true creator god that exists. I feel that asserting the opposite with equal levels of knowledge is just simply making wild claims of belief over anything with actual scientific substance. And just to be clear. I'm not saying religious people are arrogant to believe, I'm actually incredibly tolerant and happy for individuals' religions when they make positive impact in their lives and the world. I'm more saying that I personally wouldn't want to assert my belief in something I simply can't prove, either religion or atheism. TL. DR was atheist, now agnostic because how can I assert something I'll never know with any real evidence. I was staunch atheist who hated all religion until I had a professor, also an atheist 
who convinced me to respect people's religion. Around the same time I had a lot of Muslim friends and started learning about Islam and came to appreciate a lot of the why behind the practices. I tried fasting and joined in some daily prayers and appreciated the benefits of it. One day as I was joining in the prayer I realized I was praying and I felt a connection to God that I'd never felt before in my life. I realized I was a believer, and the rest is history. I grew up religious, but then became an atheist as I got older. I didn't like going to church and as someone who studied math and physics initially at university, it didn't make sense to me intellectually. I was always curious though as to why religion was so important to other people including my father who is an incredibly smart man and has doctorate and an academic genealogy which includes Nobel Prize winners. I dabbled in things like psychedelics and meditation and eventually found myself at a point where I understood that there are things that I can know without understanding intellectually, and that although we live in a society where we think with our heads and we have these intellectual tools in place to organize and improve our society, there is a part of us which is very animalistic and tribal, and these things dictate much of the world that I interact with. I thought even at that time, that religion was a crutch for weak-minded people. I slowly began to humble myself and looked at very successful, very intelligent people who were religious and wondered why and settled in a place where I understood that religion has different meanings for different people, but most religious teachings across all cultures focus on values that I strongly identified with such as community, humility, service, just to name a few. I think that ultimately religion is a tool created by humans all across history and the world to remind us of things that are so easy to forget as people who spend so much time above their shoulders. While I don't think that organized religion is for everyone and I think many religious institutions and communities can be downright unhealthy and harmful, I would consider myself a religious person. I commend people who find their own way to be in touch with their spiritual side such as yoga, or just being outdoors and would go as far as to say that I think the lol religious people are stupid and atheists are just smarter mentally on red it is both arrogant and immature most of the time and is often rooted in a reactionary place that falls apart under even a moderate amount of honest, humble introspection. I was raised a combination of Jewish and pagan, and for a while I didn't believe in a god as an act of rebellion. When I turned 20, my dad died and I hate to say it, but I became very interested in both sides of my religious background. I almost went to yeshiva and became a rabbi if not for my mom begging me not to because rabbis are just not really in demand. I'm still very religious, but in a much more general way, my husband is a pagan and an aspiring Jewish convert, so I flit between paganism and general theism.